Hi, it's Paris from Epic Review Guys, and I recently did a review of a device that's an all-day phone battery charger. Well, another company saw that review and said, that's nothing. We've got a device that can charge up your phone for a week. Well, a company saw those reviews and said, forget about it. We've got a device that can not only charge up your phone, it will charge up your laptop forever. Epic Review the company is called PowerAd, and they make little phone chargers, big phone chargers, and solar-powered chargers, which is what they've sent me. Now, you've probably seen small solar panel chargers up in the dashboard of a car occasionally, and if you plug your phone into it, and if it stays sunny all day, maybe it will charge up your phone. Those produce a few watts of power, but with this, the PowerAd people have gone big time. This device can actually produce 40 watts of power. That's enough to power a laptop computer, but it's not a little small little thing to fit in your dashboard. It's folded up now. This makes some serious power. Now with this collection of small solar panels connected together, PowerAd can give you 40 watts of power. Now we have solar power here at our house. We have uh, 18 panels up on the roof. Each one of them produces about 180 watts of power, but they are huge. Let me show you. Here are some of our rooftop solar panels. A Little bit of sun on them. It's about 9.30 in the morning, but they're still producing some power. They are big though. They don't fold up. You can't take them with you. We can look right here and see how much power we're producing right now. 260 something volts, 374 watts. So our rooftop three kilowatt system, which means it has the potential to make 3000 watts of electric power is currently outputting 378. How does that relate to this? Well, if you're thinking of charging up your phone, you don't need 40 watts. However, if you decide to go with a solar charging system, you say, well, I have five watts, seven watts, that ought to be plenty. If, what if it's partly cloudy? Well, then you may not have enough watts being produced by your small solar panel system to charge up your phone. This guy, even when it's mostly cloudy, will still probably be able to produce the five watts that you need. Now, if you're talking about a laptop, and I'm gonna try this out with my laptop, you're gonna need significantly more power. Even at idle, laptop's gonna need 20, 25 watts. So this would have to produce quite a bit of power to run your laptop, but I, I don't think that's what it's designed for. I think it's just to charge up your laptop battery but I'm gonna try running the laptop on it and see what happens. Here are some devices that they say you can charge from this device, and here's some of the specs for it. At five volts, which is what your phone, your Kindle, your iPad will charge at, it's at 2.1 amps, which means it should be able to charge your phone pretty quickly, your tablet at usual speed. And then for laptops and some other devices, they use the 18 volts, and that's at 2.2 amps. Now they do say over here that some devices may have trouble charging from this, and if that's the case, you can use this to charge up a portable battery pack like this one, and then use this to, to charge up the device you're having trouble with. And if you're saying, well, where do I plug it in? That would be right here. You can see the standard USB connector there. Then they also have this round plug. Now they provide a cable and a whole bunch of adapters that are supposed to fit the the most common notebook type connectors. So you can plug this into the cable, and then at the end of the cable, you put on the special adapter for your laptop. Here's the cable they give you, and here are the laptop adapter pieces. Surprisingly short user manual. They do mention that these panels have 22% efficiency, which is pretty good for solar panels. The ones on my roof are about 15% efficient. Also, this PowerAd device contains a voltage regulator, which is very important because you never know, you might be running along fine at a particular voltage, but then a cloud passes in front of the sun, your voltage does funny things, and if that gets passed directly into your sensitive electronic device, it can damage it. So they say there's a voltage regulator in here to help smooth that out so it doesn't shock your electronic device and damage it. So let's take it outside and give it a try. They don't include a USB cable to connect it to your phone, so you have to remember to bring that along. Now there's no LED panel on here telling you how many watts you're producing, which I would really like, but I'm here in the darkened garage. Let me head out here into the driveway and you will see there is an indicator to let you know there's at least enough power to run the voltage regulator. 
Okay, I'm just going to leave it lying flat on the driveway here. The sun is up at about a 30 degree angle right now, I think, and mm, still mostly cloudy. Okay, here's my phone at 89% charge and not charging. I'm going to plug it in, see what happens. All right, looks like it's working. 89% charge, but it is now charging. And that's with that partial sunlight here on the panel. Now what happens if I stand up and put some shade on here? Let's shade about half of it. Now let's see, let's say, still charging. Okay, I'm gonna shade the whole thing in. Wow, still shows it's charging. This phone must not draw a whole lot of watts of power. And here, just a couple steps inside the garage, not charging. Step right back out here, into the shade, charging. I left my phone out here connected to the solar power charger for about five minutes, and it went up from 88% to 90%, so it actually is charging. And here is my next challenge. I've got my laptop out here. It is showing 88% and running on battery. I went through the list of converter pieces and I found a little plug that fits, so I'm going to plug it in and see in this so-so light if it's enough to charge that battery. All right, here we go. It is jumping between modes of being plugged in and not being plugged in, so that means it's right on the edge. See, it went AC, battery, AC, battery. It switches modes when you plug it in, so that's what's happening. It's right on the edge of that. Okay, the laptop is running. It shows as charging. I waited until it was a little closer to noon, and the clouds cleared up a little. Bright sunny day out now. It's producing enough power to run the laptop. So as you could see, the PowerAd solar charger was able to actually run the laptop and charge up the battery. It required perfect conditions though, because as soon as the sun started to go behind another cloud, screen went black and it was going back to that switching low power plugged in mode thing again. So still that's quite a bit of power you can get out of it at maximum. I don't think they recommend you actually run your laptop on it. It's for charging your laptop. When you're doing that, you can continue to charge it with less than perfect weather conditions. So what does this little 40 watt solar power charging gem cost? $200. Now, if you really need it, it's great. It seems to work really well. It's got some extra spots here where you can strap it onto the back of your backpack or your tent if you're camping. That's really the number one use for this that I can see is for people who don't have access to power on the grid. If you're going to be out somewhere, you're going to have to carry a bunch of these for your phone. And if you've got a laptop that you need to use while you're out or something that draws more power, this just isn't going to do it this will. So for camping, hiking, boating, out on a sailboat, this would be great. It's really not that heavy, a couple pounds or so, and of course it folds up nice and compact so it can fit wherever you need to take it. The other time this would come in handy is when the power goes out, especially if it's for a day or two or longer, if there's a hurricane, some sort of natural disaster or an ice storm that it takes them a week to get the power running again at your house, this would really be a lifesaver. So this definitely does seem to do the job that it claims. What you have to decide is, is it worth the money for your likelihood of needing it? Now, if you are an avid hiker and you'd like to be able to use some electronics when you're a three days hike out from the nearest plug, this would be a good idea. If you have in, um, say, the bottom of your pantry out in the kitchen, you've got boxed up your three days worth of emergency water and canned goods and the flashlight and the radio and you're well prepared, this could be a good addition to that too. Now my family doesn't usually stray too far from the power outlets, and I really like the idea of having something like this just in a closet so that if it turns out you're gonna have a few days of no electricity and it's fairly widespread, you can't just go to a hotel and stay there for a few days, this would be really nice to have. If you're interested in learning more about it, I have a link down below this video. I'll also put links to my review of this charger my review of this charger and the video that I did about living with solar panels on the roof of your house. Shopping is easy when you know what to buy.